A plane took off for a routine repositioning flight, and minutes later, it was flipping upside down, diving uncontrollably, and refusing to follow any commands. There was no storm or engine failure, just chaos. And for nearly two hours, the pilots fought to keep it from crashing while the plane spiraled through the sky like it was possessed. And the scariest part? The real problem was hiding deep inside the wings thanks to a mistake made weeks before takeoff. So what exactly caused the airplane to behave this erratic? And how did the crew survive with no working autopilot or roll control? In this video, we will unpack the full story of Air Astana Flight 1388, from the mechanical flaw that nearly tore it apart to the desperate decisions that brought it back down in one piece. Let's get started. On November 11, 2018, Air Astana Flight 1388 was scheduled as a simple repositioning flight. It wasn't carrying regular passengers, just three experienced pilots and three technicians on board. The aircraft, an Embraer ERJ-190LR, registered as P4KCJ, had just completed heavy maintenance at OGMA's facility at Alverca Air Base in Portugal. Its route was supposed to be a straightforward hop to Minsk, Belarus, before continuing to its home base in Almaty, Kazakhstan. The flight took off at 1331 local time. Weather conditions weren't ideal, but not unusual. Visibility between 1.2 to 1.9 miles and patchy low clouds. However, within minutes of takeoff, something felt off. The aircraft began displaying erratic behavior. The pilots couldn't keep it stable. Inputs on the controls weren't producing expected results. Instead of smooth banking or turns, the jet pitched, rolled, and yawed with increasing violence. Normally, if pilots suspect trouble, engaging the autopilot can help stabilize the aircraft. But when they tried it, it refused to activate. That was the first serious red flag. What they were dealing with wasn't just turbulence, it was a control issue. The plane wasn't responding to commands properly and there were no failure alerts from the flight systems, just constant warnings for abnormal flight attitudes. Captain Vyacheslav Aushev was in command, with First Officer Bawirjan Karasholikov and another First Officer, Sergei Sokolov, occupying the jump seat. The three technicians on board were also assisting where they could. Everyone on board was fully aware that this wasn't a minor issue. It was potentially fatal and yet none of the onboard systems showed any mechanical failure. The pilots were flying blind in terms of diagnostics and fighting the controls manually at every second. What was meant to be a basic transfer flight had turned into a full-blown emergency, one that no one had trained for in this exact form. The jet was twisting in the air with a crew desperately trying to keep it away from populated areas, terrain, or worse, breaking apart mid-air from overstress. And at this point, no one knew what was causing it. All they knew was the aircraft was completely unstable and they were going to have to improvise to survive. The situation soon escalated from unstable to uncontrollable. The Embraer ERJ-190 was no longer just difficult to fly. It was throwing itself into wild, violent maneuvers that put everyone on board at risk. As the pilots fought to stabilize it, the aircraft began performing full rolls in the air, flipping completely over multiple times. At one point, it nearly inverted entirely, banking more than 90 degrees. Then came the dives, rapid nose-down plunges that pushed the crew into their harnesses and slammed their bodies with intense G-forces. The roll oscillations became so aggressive that the plane couldn't hold any heading. The ailerons were misbehaving in a way that made turning left result in an uncontrollable right bank and vice versa. The crew didn't know it yet, but the aileron cables had been installed backward during recent maintenance. That detail wouldn't be discovered until much later. At that moment, they were just reacting, trying to stay in the air. Captain Vyacheslav Aushev and First Officer Bawirjan Karasholakov were using every trick they knew to fight the jet's strange behavior. At one point, the aircraft performed a barrel roll unintentionally, 
According to later reports, they experienced such strong G-forces during recovery that it caused structural stress across the wings and fuselage. The plane was never designed for this kind of maneuvering. It wasn't an acrobatic jet. Every second in that condition risked catastrophic failure. In the cockpit, panic wasn't an option, but desperation was setting in. The crew issued a mayday call and squawked 7700, the universal code for a general emergency. They asked multiple times for air traffic control to vector them toward the sea. Not because it was a better route, but because ditching in the ocean was starting to feel like their only shot at survival. They couldn't control altitude consistently. They couldn't stabilize heading. And the erratic movements meant crashing into a populated area was a real possibility. By now, the Portuguese Air Force was on alert. Two F-16 fighter jets were scrambled from Monte Real Air Base and quickly caught up to the Embraer. Their job was to visually assess the aircraft and assist if it came close to crashing. The presence of the fighters didn't solve the problem, but it did make clear how serious things had become. The F-16 pilots flew alongside the flailing jet and watched as it attempted to level off. The jet was clearly struggling, drifting in its approach paths and visibly wobbling in the air. On the ground, emergency crews were preparing for a worst-case scenario. But despite the chaos, the crew managed to keep the aircraft airborne for nearly 90 minutes before finally setting course for Beja Air Base. It wasn't a clean path. The Embraer attempted two landings and failed both due to instability and control loss. It wasn't until the third approach that the crew, now physically and mentally drained, managed to bring the aircraft down, barely. Instead of landing on runway 19R as planned, the plane drifted off and landed on 19L, completely missing its intended mark. By the time it touched down, one technician had suffered a leg injury. Everyone else was physically intact but shaken. The aircraft, on the other hand, had endured forces far beyond its design limit. The leading edges of the wings were wrinkled, the fuselage was warped, and the airframe was considered a total loss. Now that the plane was on the ground, the real question started. What could have caused a modern jet to behave like that, with no system warning, no alerts, and no obvious failures? The answer wasn't in the sky, it was back in the hangar buried deep inside a botched maintenance job that would spark one of the most serious investigations in recent aviation history. The chaos that unfolded in the sky didn't start in the cockpit. It started weeks earlier in a hangar at Alvercar Air Base. The Embraer ERJ-190 had been undergoing scheduled heavy maintenance at OGMI, Portugal's aerospace and defense company. One of the key tasks was to overhaul the aircraft's aileron control cables. This meant replacing pulleys, support structures, and the actual cables that control the left and right roll of the plane. That job was completed, but it was completed wrong. The left and right aileron cables were accidentally reversed. That one mistake flipped the aircraft's basic logic. Turn left, and the plane would roll right. Turn right, and it would roll left. Worse, there were no built-in systems to detect this configuration error. No cockpit alert, no warning message, not even a maintenance warning during the final checks. The only red flag came in the form of a cryptic message during test runs, FLT Cutrol No Dispatch. It indicated a control issue but didn't specify what. Maintenance teams spent 11 days trying to clear that fault without realizing the root cause was mechanical. Those two cables crossed deep inside the wing structure. Investigators later confirmed that the aircraft had been released back to Aristana with the cables still reversed. That means it passed internal quality checks, manufacturer-supported troubleshooting, and final pre-flight procedures without anyone realizing the ailerons were working backwards. This was more than a simple maintenance error. The final report by Portugal's GPIA de Sheraf pointed to a complete breakdown of safety layers. Ojima's quality control system failed to detect the reversal. The technicians working on the plane weren't grouped by specialization or experience. Their inspections were treated more like paperwork than a serious check of physical systems. Even during operational testing, 
no one cross-checked yoke movement with physical aileron deflection. The manufacturer wasn't off the hook either. Embraer's manuals were vague and poorly illustrated, making it easy to misinterpret routing diagrams. There was no simple built-in safeguard to prevent cable reversal or even confirm it had happened. The aircraft design allowed for the mistake to happen silently. Air Astana's procedures were also called out. Their pre-flight control checks weren't thorough enough to catch a reversal this significant. And the aviation authorities responsible for certifying OGMA's work had failed to enforce stronger oversight on the return to service process. This wasn't just one system breaking down, it was every safety net failing at once. One bad connection buried inside the wing ended up putting six people into a nightmare at 25,000 feet and destroyed a multi-million dollar jet that was supposed to be airworthy. Following the final report, changes were made across the board. Embraer updated their maintenance manuals with clearer diagrams and more explicit instructions to prevent misrouting. Aristana overhauled its post-maintenance inspection protocols, OGMA introduced new training requirements and created a separate inspection team to double-check critical flight systems. Regulators also tightened oversight on aircraft returning to service after heavy maintenance, especially when it involves control surfaces. The GPIAAF reclassified the incident from serious to a full accident after reviewing the structural damage and safety risks. They issued multiple safety recommendations, not just to the companies involved, but to the wider industry. One flight had revealed how fragile the system really was when proper procedures break down. So what do you think about this wild flight? Could you imagine being on board as the plane flipped and rolled through the sky? Drop your thoughts in the comments, and if this story kept you on the edge of your seat, Make sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more unbelievable aviation stories. Until next time, safe travels.